Thank you for staying with us on Y254 News Updates. And tonight we talk about menstrual health. And maybe in the Menstrual Health Awareness Month with me in studio is uh, Gladys McKenna, who is a nurse by profession. And she's going to help us understand how do we get to end the stigma uh, that is attached to menstruation? How do girls be, and women also be able to acquire or to, to, to get uh, sanitary towels that are, that are affordable during their periods and you can be part of this conversation by sharing your views on our social media platforms that is on y254 channel hashtag y254 news and you can also reach me at patricia morioki3 thank you very much gladys for finding time to really come and talk with us on this issue it is a topic that i can say Many people don't like talking about it openly, That's but true. with here as we have grown, we cannot say like we are where we were at five years or 10 years ago as far as menstruation is concerned. And my first question would be, what exactly, what is menstrual hygiene for someone out there who is watching us tonight? Okay, thank you so much, Patricia. You're welcome. Um, menstrual hygiene, it's whereby you speak of sanitation, you speak of water, and you speak of a better place where the girls or women can be able to change their sanitary pads and dispose the right way. Mm -hmm. So when we are speaking of menstrual hygiene, it's a combination of all those things to make it possible for a woman, for a girl, to be comfortable during her, her menstruation days. Okay. So that is all about menstrual hygiene. Uh, you've talked about water, you've talked about sanitation. Yes. Would we say that probably all those things are there? Can we say that there is access mm -hmm. to enough infrastructure as far as having good uh, a good menstrual hygiene is concerned? Uh, currently we are somewhere mm -hmm. as a country, mm -hmm. but we can't say we are at that point because you find in some places there's no water, okay. whereby these girls need to wash their hands after changing their pads, whereby these girls need a safe place where they can change their pads and mm -hmm. dispose them properly. Mm -hmm. So we still have a long way to go, we're not there yet. Okay, yes. so what do you think has some of the ways, what do you think are some of the strategies that can be put to make sure that those areas whereby girls do not really have enough mm -hmm. water, or those areas whereby probably there are not even places where they can go and change, there are schools probably whereby there are no latrines, there, mm -hmm. there are no changing spaces. What can we do, what strategies can be put there uh, to make sure that that this is not a problem anymore. Uh, you find so far so good, there are some NGOs that come part with the government, they mm -hmm. partnership together. Okay. Example, we have the PNG where they partner with the government, the counties and the schools and they take the education to the kids no matter where they are. But for the government, they can be able to build better infrastructures in the schools. Because mm -hmm. in the county level, they are be able to know which school needs this, which school does not have latrines, which school does not have a toilet, which school does not have water. So with that, it's partnership. The government itself has a role to play, and the NGOs can come hand in hand so that we can be able to fight this battle together. Okay. So we need, we need to work on it. Okay. Yes. So let us talk about stigmatization. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stigma that is attached to menstruation. People do not want to talk about it. Yeah, People don't want to openly sit somewhere and discuss about menstruation. So mm -hmm. how do we end stigmatization? Okay, as for me, my mom took long to speak about menstruation. Mm -hmm. By the time we had the talk, I was already menstruating. Mm -hmm. So I think for parents to begin with, they should start speaking about these things with their girls from the age of maybe nine years, because that's the age when girls are able to start their menstruation. Mm -hmm. From nine years and above, a girl can start menstruating. Mm -hmm. So the parents have an obligation of starting the talk early, and also the schools, they can try to bring in the health from the kids, both girls and boys, because we go different through periods of puberty. Girls have their own problems in puberty, boys have their own role to play in puberty. Mm -hmm. But the moment we are taught together, it becomes easy to understand each other, to know there are changes that are affecting both parties. Mm -hmm. So the stigma itself, it's going to somehow be finished mm -hmm. by the teaching of the boys and girls together about these things, not telling the girls to go aside and mm -hmm. the boys to go aside, but to do a class that is one. Okay, yeah. so we know that uh, during menstruation, it is not easy. There are the moods. There, there is also like the menstruation disorders and all that. There is a period pain. Mm -hmm. So how now do how do young ladies? How do girls? What are the best mechanisms to cope with all these that come? Because we had, I understand that there are different disorders. They are, they are probably someone someone whose period is gonna take a longer time to yeah, to come. There's someone probably who is going to miss their period probably in the, in May and it's gonna come in June. So what, how do we get to address such problems? Or what is the best way for, mm -hmm. person, for a person who is experiencing that problem, what approach would you uh, advise them to take as a nurse? Okay, to begin with, you find when someone begins menstruation, 
it doesn't come every month. At times it skips a month, two months, then after that the periods are there back again. But for the period pain, there are ways that you can know I'm almost menstruating as a woman or as a girl. You find there are signs, maybe you feel the soreness on the breast, you feel those mood swings that you are talking about, mm -hmm. you feel maybe an increased appetite, maybe there is increase in the vaginal discharge, but there is ways that you can cope with that. Because for the mood swings, one thing, it's you to control them. I know mm -hmm. they are there mm -hmm. and people understand the mood swings are there. Okay. But as a woman, you also have to know how to control them. Mm -hmm. When you come to the pain during menstruation, most of the time we tell the young girls, it's good to maybe if you have a bottle, uh, maybe a plastic bottle, mm -hmm. you can put hot water mm -hmm. in it, then you can rub the lower part of your berry. Okay. Also after that, if you're in class or maybe you are working and you feel there's that cramping pain, you can be able to breathe in and you breathe, just breathe in and you breathe out. Okay. If not that, you can also take, do some exercises. Because mm -hmm. the more you do exercise, you're able to relax the muscles. Mm -hmm. So you just take a walk. If not that, you can even, if it's during school time for the schools, the girls who are in school, okay. you can just take a round through the field. And at the end of it, you're going to feed some, at least some relief from that. Mm -hmm. But if that does not work, it doesn't mean you don't seek a medical consult. Mm -hmm. If it's severe pain whereby you can't control it, you can speak to maybe the teacher who is in school, or maybe you can speak to your parents at home. It may be your dad, your mom. That's where we are saying it's good to be comfortable with both parents mm -hmm. maybe mom is at work that is available mm -hmm. so you can speak to either of them then they can take you to the doctor or to the nearest pharmacy and you can get something to drink okay. a drug. Uh, you've talked about medication yes. and most times the people have come out and say that it is not advisable to take uh, uh, medication when you have uh, your period your periods that is probably mm -hmm. to try and get rid of the period pain mm -hmm. what are the, are the dangers of taking medication during uh, period uh, to relieve period pain uh, not really, mm -hmm. but the fact that you take the right medication, mm -hmm. you just you have to go to the right doctor or to the right pharmacy mm -hmm. for you to get the right medication. Mm -hmm. Because you might find someone out there is not sure which drug to give. But if you go to the right doctor that is qualified, you are able to get the right medication from okay. that. Okay. So now, uh, when should we, we've, we've always talked about when should we have the sex conversations with our daughters and our, uh, and our sons? Mm -hmm. When should we have the menstruation talk? Because most times, you've just said that you, by the time your mother was having the conversation with you, you had already started your menstruation. Yes. So some, we, th we assume that we know that at the age of 13, that is when puberty begins. Mm -hmm. And most parents will wait for at 13 to probably have the conversation with their kids. But based on how things are changing, the type of foods that kids are consuming these days, you find that a nine-year-old girl mm -hmm. already probably ha is having her periods. So how do... What time, really, should parents start having these conversations with their kids before we get to, like, how now do they get to do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So from the age of nine years, mm -hmm. a girl is be able to go through the process of puberty. I know some people, they start late puberty, but from as early as nine years, the parents should be comfortable speaking to their daughters about puberty and about menstruation. Okay. This means that if you find that your daughter is able to understand what is happening. You know, sometimes maybe they are, you still look, maybe they are young, but the body size does not matter. Mm -hmm. What matters is that they are at the age bracket where they're supposed to begin the menstruation. So as a parent, you should feel comfortable, start with easy words, not difficult words, then they're able to understand from nine years and above, you're okay to start it up. Uh -huh. Okay, so now for a parent having this talk with their daughter, mm -hmm. what information should they give? What information are you supposed to give your daughter to make sure that she's well equipped? Mm -hmm. She knows how to go about it. She knows like how she's supposed to clean during her periods. She understands basically everything mm -hmm. during that time of the month. Okay. From a parent's view, mm -hmm. which I'm not yet there, mm -hmm. but I think or what I know is that a parent should be able to begin with the basics, like telling them this is a natural thing that happens to every woman. Okay. They have to be made known from the beginning. It's not a straight thing. It's not a curse. It's something that has to happen. Mm -hmm. And you make them comfortable by letting them know the moment you become a woman, there are responsibilities. It's an extra responsibility that has come onto you. Mm -hmm. And you make the kid feel comfortable with the changes, not to feel like hiding them up because they're happening. Mm -hmm. So for a parent who is beginning, can just tell them it's natural, it happens. I'm also menstruating as a parent. Mm -hmm. Up to 50 years and above, that's when maybe you get menopause, that's mm -hmm. when you come to the end of menstruation. Mm -hmm. But for now, in the journey together, just make it like a, just a fun talk, mm -hmm. you and your daughter. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you can teach them about how to use the pads by demonstrating mm -hmm. how it's 
used, how to wash the panty properly, mm -hmm. the sides of a panty, because a panty has three sides. Mm -hmm. So there's how the pad is also divided into three parts, mm -hmm. that you are able to use the pads correctly, yes. so that you cannot have any leaking or anything, mm -hmm. or maybe you feel like it's itching or something. There's a strategy that you can put it, and you're comfortable using it. Mm -hmm. Then from there, after the demonstration, you don't, don't demonstrate only once. For the kids, maybe you can do it twice or thrice, for them to understand keenly and tell them to do a return demonstration, mm -hmm. so they can be sure of what the mam mommy has told them, or auntie or sister. Because mm -hmm. sometimes some kids are comfortable with their sisters, or maybe an aunt. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you can teach them about taking a shower, maybe twice in the morning and in the evening. Or maybe from that, you can teach them to hang their panties outside to avoid any infection, okay. how to wash their hands. Okay. It's basically those things. Okay. Yes. We've talked about mom, we've talked about sister, we've talked about aunties. Yeah. We have daughters. We have young girls who are being raised by single fathers. True. And we are trying to create an environment whereby when it comes to a point whereby the father needs to have the conversation with their daughter, they don't have to go and look for the auntie. Mm -hmm. They don't have to go and look for the grandmother to come and have this conversation. Mm -hmm. So how do we now get to bring this single father on the table and make him understand that you can also do it. You can also manage to guide your daughter mm -hmm. through this uh, stage in their life. Okay. So far, so good. There's a program that is running mm -hmm. called Always Keeping Girls in School Plus mm -hmm. Boys by Bethel and PNG. Mm -hmm. You find that when you go to that classroom, you do you teach both girls and boys. Okay. To a point that I know the boys wonder. Most of them they wonder like, why am I in this class? Because mm -hmm. they can see always over here. Mm -hmm. So why am I here? But the sense of them being there, it's because we want to nurture them from a young age, teaching them they're going to be fathers in future. Okay. They're going to be husbands in future, and they have to know what happens. Not like when maybe the your daughter is crying, the husband is not able to understand what's happening. They don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. But the moment you touch, you start teaching them from a young age about menstruation, about what happens in a woman's body, about what to expect, you find from that young age they grow up knowing these things. Mm -hmm. But so far, so good. I know most of the fathers out there, they were never taught about that. Yeah. But we try and incorporate them in the classes. As you teach maybe on a parent's day, you can teach the parents how to use pads, how to, you just demonstrate mm -hmm. to both fathers and mothers mm -hmm. on how to use these pads. Okay. Plus also they can ask a consult maybe from uh, those sisters who are there mm -hmm. so that they can teach them how to do it and make it easy for the daughters to approach them. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so now we're talking about uh, teaching the kids from home mm -hmm. on how to deal with, with their menstruation. Yeah. We have education in school. In class six days where we get to, to learn about the, reproduct uh, the reproductive system and all that. Mm -hmm. Is that information that is offered in school enough to make sure that a girl is well prepared when their periods comes, probably if mom and dad have not had the conversation with you, is it enough? Can we say it is, it is enough? Uh, it's not enough, mm -hmm. but at least the teachers mm -hmm. try and make it adequate for mm -hmm. the children in school. Mm -hmm. But that's why after the teacher teaches, they expect maybe the parents at home, mm -hmm. they're going to pick up the conversation from somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough. Mm -hmm. The parents need to chip in. Okay, so now what can teachers do? What, what, can, we, what can the teachers now probably adopt to, to make sure that when they are teaching that, they don't only get to tell you that, oh, this happens, mm -hmm. you're going to, to have menstruation probably once in your month, this is what causes it. And what more can they do to make sure that there's enough information to the students to also understand everything? Uh, most of the times when you go to the schools, you find that the students, maybe they fear the teacher somehow. Mm -hmm. So it's good if you're the teacher who deals with health in the schools or guidance and counseling, mm -hmm. for one, you can be a bit a bit comfort, they can, you can make some comfort zone for you and the girls, mm -hmm. whereby any girl can approach you, not with fear of maybe this teacher is going to be tough, maybe the teacher is going to be like this. The moment you create an environment where these girls can approach you, they can also be able to get confidence in you, whereby okay. they can be able to listen to you, they're going to ask you any questions they have, and they're going to get comfortable. So for the teachers, it's good if there's that environment where a girl can approach you, where even though it's a male teacher or a female teacher, they are confident in approaching the teacher, mm -hmm. knowing that they're going to get help from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what is the role of men in menstruation, in menstrual health? Because we are talking that we want to bring them on the table. We're yeah. talking about having single dads out there who are raising daughters. But what really is it that we get to to get by making making sure that the boys and the and the men are also educated on menstruation? Okay, so what we get from that is that the stigma is going to decrease in the society. Whereby there is not a single girl who is in class 6 or class 7 or class 5 who is going to start the menstruation and maybe she has stained her dress and the boys are jingling or laughing 
laughing towards her. Mm -hmm. The moment you teach them on this, that these things happen to girls at any time, and it's possible sometimes to mess, you find that the stigma is going to reduce in the society, mm -hmm. and women are going to get comfortable and confident around the boys, around at workplaces, knowing that these people understand what we are going through. Mm -hmm. So their role is to understand us and also to support us mm -hmm. during these periods. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now talking about products that are used uh, during uh, menstruation, we have the we have the pads, we have now the menstrual cup, we have the tampons. I want us to look at the fact whereby there's a research that was done in, in among girls, young girls in the in Western Kenya, mm -hmm. and most of them say that they prefer having been given. Uh, it's like it was like an experimental program whereby they were given the menstrual cups and the tampons to try and see if the girls would embrace it. And most of them say that they prefer using that because these there's less there are less less cases of leakage mm -hmm. but now there is a society whereby there are there are communities whereby they do not really advocate for using menstrual cups or tampons mm -hmm. so how do we get now to try to bring and go to the rural areas and educate these women that yes we are getting like this is a problem probably you feel that you don't feel uh, that as a society you're going to embrace it but how do we get to teach them and show that it is an option that probably could save the girls from all these uh, things that come out with uh, menstruation uh, to begin with someone has to be first be comfortable mm -hmm. with the fact that menstruation is here mm -hmm. and it's your own blood it's your own body content it's not something that is mm -hmm. dirty or something that that is going to scare you off. Mm -hmm. So by getting comfortable with that, you find that most of these reusable things is that people maybe, most of the society, they feel uncomfortable with washing them out, mm -hmm. or maybe they feel like it's not hygienic. Mm -hmm. But the moment you follow the right steps on using them, maybe with the, dis the pads, the reusable pads, the one that people wash, mm -hmm. then you hang them properly, then mm -hmm. you use them again. Mm -hmm. One thing for that, they are cheaper. The point that when the moment you buy one, you can use it for a period of maybe a year. Mm -hmm. By the, the right sanitation, washing it properly with hot water, you hang it outside for the, for it to dry properly, then you okay. can use it up. Mm -hmm. For the cups, you have to boil them up so that you can dis disinfect them mm -hmm. from infection or anything. Mm -hmm. But the problem with most of the people is the fact that it's blood. So it sounds weird, but it's your own blood. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from your own body. So the moment you're comfortable with that, you find it's easy for you to use them. Mm -hmm. So the key thing is comfort. Okay, so talking about the reusable pads and the menstrual cup, whereby these are things that you have to clean so well for you to use them again. Uh, can we say that probably if we introduced if we introduced reusable pads in Trukana, mm -hmm. if we introduced these reusable pads in, in, in the rural areas of this country whereby uh, there, there is scars, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of scarcity in some things like water and all that. Do these, do these girls have the enough knowledge to know like, probably how they're supposed to clean it? Do, they, do we really know that they are not exposing these kids or these girls to diseases or infections? Uh, before the girls and the women are given the products, they have to go through education and training. You have to train them on how to use them. You have to train them on the advantages, on the disadvantages. But you find those areas, there is minimal water. There is no enough water for them to use. Mm -hmm. So I think the government, before we get to giving the parts to those areas of the country, mm -hmm. at least we need to have water. Mm -hmm. Because they need water to wash them and they need the clean water so they can avoid any infections. Mm -hmm. But for now, I think water should be the basic thing. If water is there, we can use the Everything reusable pads. Possible. Okay. Yes. So, according to the menstrual health of Ke menstrual health Kenya, 65 mm percent -hmm. of women cannot afford um, cannot afford uh, pads, mm -hmm. and according to statistics, uh, at least 10 million women are going through menstruation. Mm -hmm. So, how do we now make sure that these things are affordable? The um, pads, the tarpods, the mm -hmm. meds. How do we make sure that no girl is going to lack sanitary towels? No girl is going to stay at home because she does not have uh, the pads. That no woman at any day is going to choose between having a meal and having a pad. How do we create a balance and make sure that every person is comfortable in every month when they have to uh, go through the menstruation period? Uh, you find in the market at the moment, there are pads that are worth 50 shillings. Mm -hmm. and when you're going to the school level, you find the government, some, some of the schools, the government is able to provide the girls with sanitary pads, okay. maybe for a term. Mm -hmm. If not so, you find that the NGOs, they chip in, so they can boost the 
number of parts that the school is going to have that month. Mm -hmm. But the moment you go to the school level, you should try at least and teach them how to do savings. Because mm -hmm. if a girl is given 20 shillings, she can spend 10, 20 bob, uh, 10 bob and then save the other 10 shillings. If she's given maybe within like three days or maybe within a week, this girl is able to save maybe up to 50 shillings mm -hmm. and she can be able to fund that one packet of pads for that, for that, that, for that one month. Mm -hmm. But also we have to charge the parents to mm -hmm. be a bit responsible, mm -hmm. whereby they know their daughters are menstruating and they can be able to get them at least a packet of part per month. Mm -hmm. The school is able to boost whereby the government gets some parts for them. Mm -hmm. But also as an individual, as a parent, we can try and Get, be able to give our children at least the money to get the sanitary pads. Mm -hmm. For the women, uh, the market is broad because I can see there's always for 50 shillings mm -hmm. and it doesn't, it, it's not a good picture to mm -hmm. go and get money from someone or to go and have sex for you to get sanitary towels. It's more of uh, But then there's a, the argument of should these things even be priced or should they just be for free? Should these things have, uh, be taxed? Like should there be VAT on, on, on pads? Because Scotland actually was working on a, on a, to make sure that pads are free. And I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know where they've gotten with that. But do you think there are changes probably that also needs to be done on the side of the government? Uh, probably like the pads are for free or there's no VAT on the sanitary towels to make it easy and affordable? Yeah, for me, I think that would be a good thing. It mm -hmm. would be the perfect thing mm -hmm. because you're going to be able to get them at an easier price for mm -hmm. everyone. So if the government is able to do that for us, mm -hmm. they should do that for us. We okay. really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. As you wind up, how do we end period shame? Oh, how do we end up period shame? Mm -hmm. One thing is that, as we said, we should begin to know that this thing is natural. Mm -hmm. It's here. Mm -hmm. And to know that as, we are, as a girl, I'm going to get my menstruation. Mm -hmm. And the moment our parents start preparing us for these things from an early age, you find you're going to get comfortable about it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to embrace the fact that you have an extra responsibility. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I always tell the girls that I teach that the moment you begin your menstruation, it's an extra responsibility. It mm -hmm. makes you responsible to the society, to yourself. It makes you feel more proud. Mm -hmm. And we always have a slogan with them mm -hmm. that the moment you get your menstruation, it's like your uterus is somehow disappointed, so it's mm -hmm. crying. Mm -hmm. So we always say, ah, it's crying. So mm -hmm. let it cry okay. until we are ready for more responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So for now, I think we should just embrace it as women, mm -hmm. that this is part of us, mm -hmm. this is here to stay. Mm -hmm. And the moment we do that and our men are able to be part of it okay. and they're able to understand us, mm -hmm. we're going to be comfortable of us. Uh, do you have programs whereby you really Mm, work on or uh, concentrate on teaching, guiding young girls on menstruation? Do you have such programs and probably how can people reach you to get that information? Probably there's a teacher somewhere who is wishing that they would have a person like you come talk to the girls. So how, mm -hmm. how do you, how can people get to contact you? Uh, one thing, there is the Always Keeping Girls in School that mm -hmm. is done by the Always, the PNG mm -hmm. and Bethel Network. Mm -hmm. And we have been to 17 counties so oh, far so good. Mm -hmm. And you find that girls look for you and you teach them about life skills. We do life skills, mm -hmm. puberty and menstruation. Mm -hmm. So the moment you cover life skills about self-awareness, self-esteem, mm -hmm. you make this girl first understand who she is. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you come to puberty. You show them these things are here. They're happening. Mm -hmm. Then you come to the menstruation part. So you have covered the whole bit of this girl. Okay. So you can reach out on PNG and mm -hmm. Bethel Network. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Gladys, for really finding time to talk about this. And I'm so happy that we can actually sit and have such a conversation. And it's my hope that uh, through this month, a lot has been done and people now can embrace uh, menstruation. That is how we hand for you tonight on Y254 News. My name is Patricia Moriuki. Do have yourselves a very good night.